Whoa! How's that for an intro? Hey guys, Reese here from StudyNova.com. Thanks once again for tuning into the Study Nova YouTube channel. Let's get straight into it and address the one audience that this video is for. Now obviously there's a lot of hype when you go into IB. You have read all the horror stories about IB, you're very curious about the subject or you're very fearful of it, but nonetheless you've chosen to do it one way or the other and now you're going into it. So it's plenty of hype for all you students going to IB as your first year. Now the other end of the spectrum, you've got the students that are leaving IB that are finally done with it, they've gone through the tube of chaos and have emerged the other end victorious, successful, very sleep deprived and tired, but ready to face a new phase of their life at university. But there's one group of students that is usually overlooked and those are the poor students that are transitioning out from IB year 1 into IB year 2. Now you guys, this video is explicitly for you. Now full disclaimer, I don't know how your school in particular actually organizes its curriculum. For example, in my school, we started the extended essay process at the end of the first IB year and then kind of continued it on into the second year of IB and managed to get it done around February, March time, I think. Or was it October? Either way, it was done very early by our school. Now, right across the road from us, my friend who was in another IB school, they started their extended essay process, the entire process, in the second year of IB. So they did nothing in IB year one, essentially. So I'm not sure how your school organizes it. And the reason why I bring that up now, because some of my tips have to do with the extended essay, because it's going to take up a big chunk of your time in IB year two. The whole research process, the whole writing process, it's going to stress you out and it's going to cause chaos mentally, but it's a big chunk of your lives in IB. So regardless, you're going to need some help on it. So let's get into the first tip regarding the extended essay process. If you haven't started it, trust me, use Google Scholar. That was one of the big mistakes I did. Use Google Scholar to get your research done. My mistake was not using Google Scholar enough. I had a lot of websites for my resources and I didn't actually have any academic journals or papers to cite for my physics related extended essay. You'd think that I would be a little more serious or understanding, but you'll see in my second tip why it ended up that way and why I ended up getting a C. So tip number one, Google Scholar, use it as much as you possibly can. I'm not saying not to use Google. There are plenty of other sources outside of the academia part of Google Scholar that you can use, but don't overuse them. Kind of balance it out. Use enough papers or more if you possibly can, but you can also go to like science websites. Now that goes into my second tip, which is to take a subject or to do an extended essay on a subject that you actually enjoy. Let me give you a bit of backstory on my extended essay process. So. My extended essay process at that time started because I thought it would benefit me going into aerospace engineering. At the time, I had my sights set on becoming a pilot. I didn't actually have any rationale behind it aside from the fact that uh, you're paid to fly and you travel all the time. Those are my only real reasons to go into it. and. The rationale behind going into aerospace engineering was because aerospace engineering and then flight school and then pilot. Simple as that. I didn't really have any other plan. But the one key problem with that was my physics wasn't so good. Matter of fact, it was my weakest subject and it was a subject I got the lowest grades on despite working my butt off for it. And despite all those odds, I decided to do a physics extended essay anyway. There was a whole two weeks before the entire process started where my supervisor, my physics teacher at the time, got everyone who was doing a physics extended essay together and warned us that it's not an easy process, you should not do this unless you are fully committed to it. And I said I was fully committed to it, so I went with it. But the problem was I struggled throughout the entire thing. My first draft was absolutely terrible. My experiments were very, very DIY, very, very non-scientific. At the time, I think I made a cardboard wind tunnel, very DIY wind tunnel that I made out of cardboard. It had plenty of flaws. And my original experiment that was the only one I was going to have was a balsa wood glider and switching out the wings so that the wing length would get shorter and shorter and shorter, the wingspan, sorry. So I didn't really have any real interest in the aviation subject that I wanted to explore within the physics EE. Now would I have fared better had I done like a business extended essay because business was just one of those subjects that clicked for me. I understood everything, I got a very high 6, 1 percentage point off of level 7 without even doing much studying. So I could have done business but I thought physics would make sense and in the end I actually didn't continue aerospace engineering and I came to a school that teaches economics and business economics. So the whole reason for me telling you that story is don't do 
a subject because you think it'll be good for university. Trust me, there's a very low chance that universities will permit you to go into university just because of your extended essay or that it'll give you a significant advantage over other candidates. Trust me guys, save yourself the trouble and pursue a subject. Pursue something in the extended essay that you're really, really passionate about or really, really interested in. Doesn't matter what it is, even if it's a science, just do it. There's an experiment, but because you're passionate about it, you'll be able to actually explore anything you want regarding the subjects and regarding the experiment because you're actually really interested. And if the experiment part really isn't your cup of tea, then you might be more interested in psychology or geography. Doesn't matter, as long as you're passionate about it, do it. So that's my second very long-winded tip. My third tip for you guys is past papers. You are definitely going to need a lot of past papers going into year two and you're gonna to need to start practicing them. By now you've probably seen what mock exams are and you kind of had a feel and a taste for what it is to do the final IB exams. And like I said, if your school doesn't do that and they do it differently, then you're gonna need this tip either way because past papers are extremely important. Do some searching now, trust me. Download a couple of past papers for all your subjects and start kind of practicing them. Get a feel for them. Time yourself, especially with subjects like economics, business, psychology, history, for example. You guys need to work not only on like retaining all the knowledge that you've learned, but also on the technique. How to analyze, how to evaluate, how to conclude, and how to give those different answers for different questions because you'll also need to differentiate between, you know, four mark questions for business and six mark questions. Why are there two extra points, for example? What are they trying to look for in a higher mark question, for example? Those are things that you need to ask yourself and differentiate when you go into practicing for the final exam. But really, the most important thing is to practice retaining knowledge and practicing your technique. And that's where the past papers come in handy. So that is my third tip, past papers and practicing your technique because that is crucial. Those are the crucial combinations that you'll need to pass your final exams. Find a bunch of past papers online, whatever source you can find. The IB does like to crack down on papers or websites that have papers because, you know, it's illegal, you're not supposed to distribute them. But there are plenty of sites popping up nowadays, more so than there were when I was an IB student. So there should be plenty of resources online. Check the official IBO on Reddit. Maybe there are some sources there that have some links to some IB pass papers. But regardless, that is my third tip. Practice makes perfect. Practice everything you know through your past papers. Make some time during the week. Trust me, especially for those subjects like economics, business, history, psychology, all those long answer questions that you're going to need to answer. You will thank yourself later for practicing so hard months and months in advance from the final exams. And if your time management isn't so great, then at least try to practice three or four papers before the lead up to the exam so you can actually get a feel for timing yourself. So that's this video. I hope you IB students transitioning out from IB year one to year two have found it useful. I'll catch you in the next video. But until then, my name is Reese from studynova.com and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care everybody. Bye bye.